The process of fermentation is nothing short of magic. Every culture across the world has the unique traditional dishes that rely on the process of fermentation. There's the miso, kimchi, tempeh that's popular in Japan, Korea or other Asian countries. Uh, there's sauerkraut that's popular in Germany. There's the sardo bread that originated in Switzerland and is now available across the globe. India also has had a rich history of fermentation. The process of fermentation which was earlier used for preserving food has now become a technique for creating rich flavorful delicacies. This video is my attempt to bring to you three classic yet unique recipes that hail from different parts of India. I will also be telling you the health benefits of these recipes. If you are interested in finding out what these are, please keep watching. Hi everyone, my name is Nirupama. I'm a PhD in food science and a certified nutrition coach. Along with making YouTube videos, I also offer personal health consultations. If you are interested in getting in touch with me, I'll leave a link to my website in the description box. Let's quickly understand the importance of fermentation before we get started. Fermented foods are foods and beverages that are produced when we allow controlled growth of microbial population namely bacteria, yeast and fungus in a process known as fermentation. During the process of fermentation, the microbes release enzymes that bring about conversion of certain food components. What we get after fermentation is a nutritionally rich product which of course contains a consortium of good microbes as well as elevated levels of several micronutrients like vitamin C, vitamin E, iron, zinc, folate, phytosterols and the very important vitamin B12 which we all seem to be deficient in. The action of microbes increases the protein digestibility of fermented foods. Fermented foods have a higher level of free amino acids in them which are more bioavailable and more easily absorbed by the body. So if you are someone struggling with gut issues, fermented foods are a great option for you because they are more easily digested by the gut. Now that we have spoken about fermentation, let's dive into the recipes. Dosa, as you all might know, is a popular food item across the south of India. It is commonly made using white rice, but in today's variation, I have used red rice instead of white rice. Red rice, because of its red color, is a rich source of anthocyanins and antioxidants. Of course, when the dosa is cooked, most of its microbial population is going to die off, but the process of fermentation still makes this red rice dosa a great source of iron, B-complex vitamins, and it is also a great way to add extra fiber to the diet. Also, these dosas made of red rice have a very unique earthy flavor to them, which I absolutely love. To make red rice dosa for two to three people, add one and a half cups of red rice to a bowl. To this, Add 4 tablespoons of the white urad dal and about 8 to 10 methi seeds. To another bowl, add about 3 4th of a cup thick poha and wash the poha well. Now add the washed poha to the bowl of rice and urad dal and add a good amount of water to soak everything for at least 6 to 7 hours. After 6 to 7 hours, add this whole mixture of rice, dal and poha to a mixer jar and grind everything to a smooth paste. Pour the batter out into a biggish container because you want to leave some headspace for the mixture to rise. Give the batter a good mix with your hand because the microflora of your hand is also going to play a role in fermentation of the batter. Cover the batter and leave it overnight for 8 to 12 hours for fermentation. I fermented my batter for over 12 hours and this is what it looks like post fermentation. Look at that beautiful rice and all the bubbles that you can see. We will now start making the dosas. Grease a pan with some ghee. If you have a cast iron pan, please go ahead and use that for making your dosas. I am just going to use a non-stick pan today. Pour in one or two ladles of the batter onto a pan and spread it well. Please excuse my sloppy dosa making skills here. Add some ghee to the other side and give it a flip. I like my dosa crunchy but you can keep it soft as well. Serve your healthy and nourishing red rice dosa with accompaniments of your choice. I am serving it with some coconut chutney and some traditional potato sabzi on the side. 
These dosas are very filling because of their higher fiber content. So they are a great option if you are looking to portion control or if you are looking to shed some weight. Hanvo is a Gujarati delicacy. It is basically a savory cake which is made up of fermented rice and lentil batter and filled with the goodness of seasonal vegetables. A variety of dals or lentils are used in the recipe and the process of fermentation increases the digestibility of these dals and it also increases the bioavailability of amino acids from them. The addition of lots of vegetables adds a boost of fiber, vitamins and minerals and antioxidants to this recipe. Add 1 cup rice, half cup yellow moong dal, 1 tablespoon tuar dal, 1 tablespoon chana or the split Bengal gram dal, 1 tablespoon white urad dal and few methi seeds to a bowl. Add water and soak everything for 3 to 4 hours. After 3 to 4 hours, discard the water, rinse the ingredients a few times and transfer everything to a mixer jar. Grind the ingredients to a smooth paste and transfer the batter to a big container. Add 2-3 to three tablespoons curd or dahi to the batter. Mix well and set aside for fermentation at room temperature or at 25 degrees for 7-8 to eight hours. The fermentation of a hanvo batter might be evident by the appearance of gas bubbles on the top or a slight rise in the batter or also by its slightly sour aroma. Now it's time to add some flavors, some seasoning and lots of winter vegetables to the batter. Today I'm adding 1.5 cups of grated carrots, 1.5 cups thinly sliced cabbage and 1 cup thinly sliced bell pepper to the batter. As you can see my container is a bit too full so start with a bigger container if you are a vegetable monster like me. After all the veggies are nicely incorporated into the batter, add some mustard seeds a teaspoon turmeric powder, a teaspoon cumin powder, a teaspoon coriander powder, half a teaspoon asafoetida or hing, a teaspoon garam masala powder and salt to taste. After giving a good mix, I am finally adding a pinch of baking soda to help the hanvo rice. Mix everything and we are now ready to make our hanvo. Take a pan, add a tablespoon oil or ghee to the pan. I am using sesame oil here. You can temper the oil with some mustard seeds and curry leaves. I have forgotten to do that here. I have straight away added the hanvo batter to the pan and topped it up with some sesame seeds. The hanvo now needs to be cooked on a very low flame for 10 to 12 minutes before we flip it. The browning of the edges indicates that the hanvo is ready to be flipped. I am pulling some stunts to flip the hanvo. If you have a better way to flip it, please go ahead. Now that's the color we are looking for. I am going to allow the other side cook for 5-6 to six minutes on a low flame. The hanvo is now ready to be served. Slice of a piece and serve your hanvo as a snack with an accompaniment of your choice. I am serving it with some coconut chutney. You can serve it up with any other chutney of your choice. Kanji is truly a super drink. It has the goodness of live probiotic bacteria in it which are great for enriching our gut health. Kanji is also a great source of vitamin B12 which is very important for the proper functioning of our brain and our nervous system. It is also required for formation of red blood cells in our body and for prevention of anemia. Kanji is also a great source of vitamins and antioxidants. Now if you are someone who feels lethargic or tired through the day, please incorporate Kanji in your diet. Ideally had during the winter or the cooler months, you can also enjoy this drink all year long. For making Kanji, you are going to need 4 to 5 black carrots. You could replace these black carrots with beets or beetroots as well. We are also going to need 2 tablespoon rice seeds which needs to be ground into a powder and made into a thick paste with water. I have not shown this step here. We are going to need 2 teaspoon pink salt or rock salt and a jug full of water. We are going to start by chopping the black carrots or beets lengthwise into sticks. I am going to make 2 jugs full of kanji today. So I am adding half of my chopped carrots to this jug. 
I am now going to add about 2 teaspoon of the rye powder paste to the chopped carrots and fill up the jug with water up to the brim. I am also going to add a teaspoonful of rock salt to the jug. Give it a good mix with the back of a spatula and cover it up with a muslin cloth so as to not leave any gaps or exposure to air. Now leave the kanji in a warm spot of the house and allow it to nicely ferment for over 3 to 5 days. In warmer climates, your kanji might be ready in 3 days but in cooler climates, it might take 5 to 6 days to ferment. The doneness of a kanji depends on its sourness. So give it a quick taste to see if it's done. Once done, strain the kanji to get rid of the chopped carrots in it and pour it out into glasses to serve yourself this delicious beverage. Kanji can be safely stored in the refrigerator for 4 to 5 days. So those were my top 3 traditional Indian fermented recipes that I absolutely love making. Do let me know in the comments if you already have been making some of these recipes and also let me know if you are aware of any other interesting Indian recipes that involve fermentation. I would love to know. If you like today's video, do not forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. I'll see you guys in my next video. Take care until then. Bye.